Downstairs. You tired, dear? No, no, no. Charlie Danzig could have raked the leaves. All you have to do is ask him. I don't need Charlie Danzig to rake the leaves. They said I should exercise every day. You just can't do too much at one time. All finished down there? Yeah, it's all right. I put in a new coil. I'm sure you did a fine job. Yeah. It's awfully late, isn't it? I hope we haven't made you late for your supper. Would you like to have dinner with us? Sure. Why not? In the city. Yeah. Bad heart or something? Why do you assume that? I can tell. You read all these? Most of them. What's this one? That's a book of poems by a man by the name of Blake. What's it about? Love, fear, death, God. Would you lend it to me? <laughs> Please. Would you promise to bring it back? Yeah. Sure. You know, I don't believe you've told us your name. Richard. Richard? Richard... Atley. All right, Richard Atley. Now, you take good care of that book. Very early edition. I know. Why did you give it to him? 
Why did you ask him to dinner? Just push the reset button. We'll call the company for service. It's only three weeks to go. There's a 60-day warranty. She goes. That's put a new tension spring in the relay reset button. I was wondering what happened to the regular mm -hmm. man. Mm -hmm. The other man, Atley, Richard, Atley. Oh, him, yeah. He quit. Just took off. Didn't even pick up his money. Did you know him? I mean, anything about him? Nah. Boss just put him on as a vacation replacement. You know how they are. It's not a damn one of them stick to anything. You know, you ought to make sure that uh, crawl space is closed up, you know. You get cats in there, it sure stinks. Nothing worse than cats. See you later. Rattling. Strangest noise, I. Explain to you the ducks expand and contract. No, that's not it. Listen. There.
It's all right, it's all right. Albert, what is it? Nothing, nothing. Why didn't you tell me? I just didn't want to worry you. Are you sure? Yes. There's a razor and some other things in the crawl space, including my Blake edition. There's no lock on the outside cellar door, so it must have gotten in that way. You must have been starving. Right under here, from the refrigerator to just this side of that wall. Mm -hmm. How long do you think he's been there? I don't know. <laughs> That's funny. I guess he doesn't like mints. Look, he, he just poked his finger in the mints and then went for the apple. Alice. I don't know why I make mints. You don't like them. He doesn't like them. We've got to decide what we're going to do. Well, he's all alone, out of work. He needs a place. Alice. Well, just till he gets another job. Do you want prunes? You're not serious. You can't take in a total stranger like that. He seems a nice enough boy. I think you better have prunes. You just don't do something like that. All right, what do you do? Well, obviously he can't stay. Tell him to go. Well, suppose he refused. Got nasty. Oh, for goodness sakes. Well, what do we know about him? Who knows what his motives are? Mm -hmm. And call the police. Oh, I don't want to call the police. I don't want to get involved with the police. Why not? So suppose he's vengeful or paranoid or something. I, I don't want to provoke him. I mean, he could come back the very next night. And I, I don't want to provoke him. Then let him stay. No, no. The best thing would be to put a lock on the cellar door. Then he can't get back in. He's not there now? No. I looked. I can go to Damson's Hardware and get a padlock. Furnace going on. thinking about? Nothing. Actually, yeah, I was thinking about my sister Ada. Remember how every year when we go to Europe, she'd give us the farewell party? <laughs> mm -hmm. She'd always say, it's so nice for you with no children to hold you down. Sister Ada isn't the soul of tact. Where do we go? <laughs> I don't know. What's the difference? It's got to be better than down there. See, the corner of the shed's in the way. He probably went through the woods last night, through the Wardsboro Road. Dropped down to 28 last night. Well, the trucks go through all night. He can get a ride easily. You should have left a coat for him. Alice, he's gone. That's the end of it. He's not a responsibility.
You think you want to talk about it? About what? That boy. I haven't said a word. You don't have to. You've been banging that loom, cleaning closets, vacuuming the attic. I just have to be cleaned. I You haven't stopped thinking about him, have you? goes all day. The woods. I saw his tracks in the snow last week. What do you think he does out there? Oh, hunts, I suppose. You don't think he's still eating those awful things? I, I don't know. It's absolutely unnecessary. He gets plenty to eat at home. Albert, try to get a look at him. Why? My knitting. I have absolutely no idea how long to make the sleeves. <laughs> Richard? Richard, are you all right? Mrs. Graves worries that it's damp in the crawl space. Why don't you come upstairs and stay in the spare room for a while? Mrs. Graves and I are very happy to have you with us, and you're welcome to stay until you find some kind of work and can stand on your own feet. Now, I know, I know that Washburn's garage is looking for someone to pump gas. That's uh, down at the crossroads, about four miles this side of the dairy. Is that clear? It's understood, right? Good, good. Richard. May I ask why you wrote the word God on the cellar door? Well, it's been very nice chatting with you, Richard. Good night. said he never saw Richard. Did your cousin Sue send us a card last year? You understand, he never applied for the job. Well, you just can't expect him to take any job. Why not? Just pumping gas? He's not a graduate of the Harvard Business School. I thought you wanted something better for the boy. I do, but damn it, I wore stitches at Horn and Hardart when I was that age. It's not the same thing, dear. That was during the Depression. What's this? For my sister Ada. I thought you might want to write something on it. Love from Albert, Alice, and Richard. How will she know who Richard is? I know, but you know how she always writes the names of all the children on the cards. Ada, Ben, Susie, Fern, Donnie, and Corky. I just wanted to, that's all. It doesn't hurt. She'll think Richard's a new poodle or something. It's just Christmas. I... The nativity and... I just felt that way. I'll get us some tea.
What in the world is that? I, I don't know. I thought maybe it was another dead mouse in the wall again. It's over here. It's a pipe. We'll have to call Mr. Southey. It's not a pipe. Frankly, there's a terrible odor. The kitchen is right above the crawl space. Now, I, I know it's cold outside and you can't go out all the time, but it's extremely unpleasant and dangerous, not only to you, but to us. Now, there's, there's no reason why you can't use the facilities upstairs. You know, just past the center stairs. It would make things easier for Mrs. Graves and myself. Hmm? Fine. Fine. Thank you. Here's a shirt, underwear, and a suit. Mr. Hanneman wanted to know who they were for. <laughs> What'd you tell him? Mm. Member of the family staying with us for Christmas. <laughs> I hope he likes this sweater. Mm, it's lovely. I can't wait to see it on him. If it doesn't fit, it's his own fault. Alice, you feed them, you shelter them, you take care of them, but you can't expect them to show gratitude. I suppose you're right, dear. Anyhow, I hope he likes it. You see, it, it's Christmas Eve. Mrs. Graves and I were thinking, well, I mean, you've been with us nearly two months now and we haven't actually seen you. It'll be very informal, just family. You'll find a suit right here. I'll put it right here. There's a hot water faucet in the old set tub. Suppose I come down for you at 7.15? Or would you prefer to come up when you're ready? All right. Let's leave it that way. Um, Richard, Mrs. Graves has worked very hard on this dinner. It's quite special for her. And she has it planned to serve at 7.30. I hope you don't disappoint her. It's all right. It isn't too much, is it? You'd better get ready, dear. We really don't have much time. It must be almost... Richard. He's not coming, is he? I don't know. But you brought him down his nice suit and everything. He wouldn't talk to me. He just stayed there in that black hole and scrabbled around like a damn rat. Well, what the hell are we doing with a boy in a hole in our cellar? That's all it is. Albert. How did we get into this? Oh, it's my fault. When I told him to come upstairs, he didn't say anything. I just assumed he was too shy. I, I suppose I thought I heard what I wanted to hear. I ought to get down. Oh, no, dear, no. We've done all we can. Now, you just put on your nice smoking jacket the way we planned. We'll have our Christmas Eve dinner, just the two of us, the way we always do. <laughs>
Christmas. Merry Christmas, darling. Is it? The sauce is delicious. It's a lovely tree, isn't it? Mmm. Lovely. Like shrimp. Came from Florida. They're kind of slippery. Coordination. What's that? Richard, the way he handles that axe. If I tried that, I'd cut off my foot. I just didn't have to chop logs in Brooklyn Heights, dear. I wonder where he learned. Same place he learned to make coffee. This morning when I came down, he had the coffee made. But he didn't use the electric perk. He made it in the pot on top of the stove. You know, boiled coffee with grounds and two eggshells. That's Emil Burge, isn't it? Oh, come in. Come in, Mr. Burge. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I haven't been in this house since Frank Bigley went to Florida. Uh, can I get nice. you a cup of coffee? Oh, no, 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 bother. Where's sit down, sit down. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> well, I might as well get right to the point without uh, beating around, thank you, yes. Beating around the bush. Uh, I don't know if you know it, but uh, along with the school bus and the garage, I'm the chief of police in town. Yes, I know. Well, this is how it is. We've uh, had a little trouble now and then. First thing is the uh, school college out there on Spring Road. Some of the students sort of drop out and just hang around the town. There was a 
bunch of them that were living down at the old Franklin farm. You know, just past George Hooper's play? Why, it doesn't matter anyway. But we've had problems from time to time. Drugs and things like that. Now, you wouldn't think a, a little town like us way up here would have a drug problem, would you? No. Well, that's the way it is these days. I'll tell you the truth, people are scared of them. What are you trying to tell us, Mr. Bird? <laughs> well, you, you're pretty cut off out here. And I know that, uh, I hope you don't mind my saying so, but I know that you've been ill, and if anything should happen, what, Mr. Burge? Well, this boy that's been hanging around your place. Richard? Yeah. Richard's staying with us. Yeah. Well, uh, you don't know anything about him, do you? Do you? No. No, not really. Except that he quit the Hart Oil Company for no good reason. How do you know that? I asked Jim Hart. Why? Because I feel responsible. If anything happens, I'm responsible. Thank you, Mr. Burge, but nothing's going to happen. Richard is staying with us until he finds work, that's all. Well, it's nice of you to drop by. Yeah. Thanks for the coffee. Anytime, Mr. Burke, anytime. Downstairs to avoid him. Why? He's the chief of police in town. It wasn't that, was it? Then why did you run away? I don't know. I don't like strangers coming here. But you were a stranger when you came here. Yeah. You like sitting there like that, don't you? It's a little bit like downstairs. You like places like that, don't you? Yeah. Why? You know where you are. Safe. Safe from what? Things. You mean people? Like Mrs. Graves and me? Yeah, I guess. All people. One day you think they're one thing, and then you find out there's something else. What about your own people, uh, family? Do they know where you are? Richard, before you came to us, how did you live? Like always done. You mean in the woods? Yeah. Where did you sleep? Cave. It's about a mile over through the woods. Up the rocks. What was it like in the cave? All right. Safe. Why did you leave it to come back here? I was cold. Anyway, you give me a book. And you let me stay for supper. And you give me a sweater and everything. And you need somebody to do things. Like split the logs. And shovel the snow. And things like that. There's lots of things to do here. Thank you. 
Richard? Richard? Richard, dear, why didn't you come out? I just want to talk to you. Oh. I didn't know you went out. I was running. Running? For exercise? No. Run as fast as I can. I just came down to put some jars away. Where do you run to? Anywhere. I go away. Just walk into the woods as far as I want to. Then I run back. Fast. Mr. Graves used to run. Every morning early, he'd go over to the school track and run. You know, do one lap running and one lap walking. Just jogging. Now he, he just walks. He's out now. Did you see him? Richard? Richard, dear, what? Richard, why don't you come out? I, I just want to talk to you. Richard? No. You came upstairs last night and... We had supper and sat in front of the fire and listened to records and talk. I, I just don't see the difference. I don't mind that. It's all right. It's okay. But I gotta get back when I want to. But why does it have to be down here? I don't know. Why can't it be in the spare room? We could put a hook on the door and... I wouldn't have to go in except to clean a little. No. I understand, Richard. I, I know that all boys like to have a place of their own, but it's so uncomfortable here. I'm all right. Won't you try it for one night? You could come back here if you wanted to. Well, dear. If you change your mind, I, I've made the bed up fresh. Richard? It's all right. You don't have to if you don't want to. I mean, it's all right any way you like. See you later, dear. And add cottage cheese. Cottage cheese. Do we have another mayonnaise? I think so. Yeah. That's all, then. Albert. Hmm. Are you sure we ought to? Why not? You don't even know if he has a license. He showed it to me. His full name is Richard Roy Atley. It's a Wyoming license. Wyoming? Yeah, I asked him if that was his home, and he said he just happened to be there. I don't think he's ready. Oh, for heaven's sake, Alice. It's obvious the boy has taken care of himself most of his life. All he's doing is going into town for the groceries. But we added oregano and cottage cheese. Here's $20. That ought to cover it. And the car keys. Take the list. I'll remember. Just in case. A dozen eggs, five pounds flour, cornflakes, paper towels, toilet paper, salad oil, garlic salt, oregano, and cottage cheese. <laughs> okay, you don't need the list. Uh -huh. Drive carefully.
<laughs> Anything else, Mr. Gerard? No, that's all. Okay. Drink. Put my book? If you don't mind. Drink. Time up the car? I've got it. It's all right. Dozen eggs, five pounds flour, cornflakes, paper towels, toilet paper. Where'd you turn, huh? What can I do for you, Mr. Wheeler? Uh, give me a loaf of bread. Bread? A jar of peanut butter. A box of tea. <laughs> Dip some mayonnaise. Some flour. <laughs> Then I give him the order. Dozen eggs, five pounds flour, cornflakes, paper towels. All right, all right, go on. Then he says, you got any money? Then he looks over at those girls. And you put the $20 bill on the counter? Yeah. And it was gone? Yeah. Richard, was Mr. Harlow there, an older man with a hearing aid? He came out later. He told me to get out. You sound like Mr. Harlow. All right, Richard, we'll go over this afternoon and straighten it out. You put the car away, huh? He never said a word about being from Mr. Graves. He never said nothing. Dave. Now, Mr. Harlow, you know you told me to be careful of his kind. Maybe he just uh, lost the bill or something. Afraid to tell you. Sometimes you're that way. Richard, did you put a $20 bill on that counter? Yeah. He's a liar. I've known Richard several months now. He doesn't lie. Dave here is Harold Freeman's boy. I've known his family all my life. Mr. Harlow, I won't be able to do any more business here until Richard's $20 is returned and he has an apology. Suit yourself. I'm sorry to lose your trade. Come on, Richard. <laughs> Richard, aren't you coming up to supper? Don't worry about the $20. It doesn't matter. I'm sure that when Mr. Harlow gets a chance to talk to that boy, he'll suddenly find the money and call us. It doesn't matter, really. It's only $20. Don't worry about it. is that boy you got there. Richard? Yeah, Adley. Richard Adley. Is he around somewhere? I can't say. He goes off most of the day. Uh-huh. Is anything wrong? Has he done anything? Well, would you, uh, you folks mind taking a ride into town? Why? I just think it'd be a good idea, that's all.
he, uh, he did it with one of these. Well, didn't anybody hear anything? Hollow was upstairs all the time, but he turns his hearing aid down at night. It's terrible. Just terrible. What does Richard have to do with this? Maybe nothing. He had a fight with Dave Freeman in the store. You mean that business over the $20 bill? Oh, my God, he wouldn't do something like this over $20. Mm. Somebody said they saw him in town last night around midnight. Then they were mistaken. He was home last night. All night. All night. That's right. We had supper at 7, and then we played records till... What time, dear? Uh, almost midnight. Then we went to bed. He couldn't have been in town. Well, I'll take this down to the state police for fingerprints. It isn't likely, though. Anybody coming in from the cold wears gloves, anyhow. Well, it's about wiped out. Folks up here don't carry inventory insurance against vandalism. They never needed it before. Turn up your hearing aid. So sorry. Sorry? I'll tell you something, Mrs. Graves. Whoever did this is going to pay, one way or another. You're sure he was home all night last night? Mr. Burge, you have no right to jump to conclusions just because he's different, an outsider. I take a responsibility for my neighbors. But sometimes you find out that people aren't neighbors. They're outsiders, like you say. Richard was out last night. Oh, now, dear, you don't know that. We went downstairs when you put on the Hayden. That was 10 o'clock. I heard the cellar door slam a little later. Dear, you don't know that. He was out. You couldn't have said anything else, dear. Not to Mr. Burge. Oh, what a mess. Richard, Richard, I want to talk to you. We just came from Harlow's store. It was wrecked last night, smashed completely. Now, you were out last night. Of course, that doesn't mean you had anything to do with it. You, you couldn't know anything about it. I did it. I'm going inside. It's cold. Richard, dear, you're all overheated. Put on your Mackinac. Why, Richard? Why? They had it coming. But you can't do something like that. It was your money. It was only $20, Richard. You wrecked Harlow's store completely. Just all out of proportion. I can't let anybody do that to you. I gotta take care of you. I gotta keep you safe. I, I appreciate your motivation, but, uh, Richard... Richard, listen to me. We need a good fire tonight. It's gonna be cold out there. Nice and warm inside. Warm and safe. Mrs. Graves and I have badly compromised ourselves. We lied to Chief Burge. We told him you were in last night. All night. Now, we'll back you up this once, you understand. But if anything like this happens again, you're on your own. You understand? If this happens again, you'll have to go. There he is. Let's get him!
They drove into my backyard, banged into the trunk of my car. Nothing happened with the trunk of your car, huh? Well, it could have been a lot more serious. I want you to find those boys. I don't have to. I know who they are. Why don't you bring them in? I intend to press charges. <coughs> you don't want to do that. It'll only make things worse. They've been honking their horns all night long. We can't sleep littering the yard with beer cans. It's a shame the way those kids throw those beer cans around. Listen, Verge, I want those boys brought in. I intend to. I'll haul them in, I'll give them a good tongue lashing. Tongue lashing? What about the damage to my car? Oh, yeah, the damage. You've got insurance, haven't you? Yes. You're lucky. What's the matter? I've got your things all packed. What is it? Oh, Ada called. Anything wrong? No, you remember we asked you to get us tickets to the symphony? Zubin made it conducting the bar talk. But tonight? Do we have to? Oh, well, Ada's got all that trouble. She's got the tickets. She wants us to stay over. What about Richard? I wrote him a note. You better get into your blue suit. No, no, I'm fine. It's like I've been away for a week. We had such a good time. You really ought to do that more often. Albert, did you pay Ada for the tickets? This is too much. What do you mean, shh? He'll hear you. You're damn right he'll please, hear. Please. I, I can tie them up again. It really doesn't matter. What's the matter with you? Albert, we had such a good time in Boston. The museum and the symphony. It, it felt so free. What's that got to do with this? I don't know. I, I just know I felt afraid as soon as we came home. Even before this, I, I just suddenly felt afraid. If he's down there now, I'm going to tell him that... You went off. I came in and you was gone. Richard, we left you a note. I waited all night for you and you didn't come back. But you knew we were in Boston. Mrs. Graves left you a note. Notes don't mean nothing. Richard, I know you can read. You wrote the word God on the cellar door. Brighton just lies to you. People always say they're coming back, but they never do. You left me. Mrs. Graves is upstairs crying. Don't you ever try that again. 
The point is... Don't Richard, you ever! Richard, Mrs. Graves and I have... You better have... not try that again! All right, Richard. It won't happen again. I promise. out there somewhere watching. You know, we, we've got to approach this thing sensibly. I mean, he's got to understand that things can't go on this way. He'll never leave. God knows what he'll do if you try to send him away. You've got to call Mr. Burge. Well, what'll he do? I mean, I called him twice about those hoodlums out there. He said he'd send somebody over, and he never did. But you never said anything about Richard. I'll be damned if I turn Richard over to him. I mean, we owe him something. What? What do we owe him? He isn't anything to us. Well, you wanted him. You fussed over him. You mothered him. You took him to your bosom in some crazy menopausal fantasy. Oh, Alice, Alice, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I've been... <laughs> Albert, I had the most awful dream last night. I had a baby and I was nursing it. And I looked down and his eyes were wild. And it was filthy and... That teeth in it fit me and there was blood on. Albert, call Mr. Burge. Make him go away. Make him leave us alone. Are you sure? Come on. I'm afraid. Now, we're not going to say anything about uh, uh, Harlow's. We'll tell Burge to make Richard go away. Get in the car. I wouldn't start. The distributor cap's are gone. Take the distributor cap off my car. You don't have to go nowhere. Now listen, Richard. You have no right to touch my car. That's my property. We gotta stay together. I gotta take care of you. I'm not going anywhere. Richard. Richard, if you had some money, enough money to travel a little, see things, Maybe get a second-hand car, like one of those campers. You could live in the back with curtains on it and, and everything. Lots of young people live in them. It's safe. It's very safe. I ain't leaving. I ain't never leaving. I'm going to have to ask you to leave right away, today. Or else I'm going to have to take steps. You understand? If you don't go, I'm going to have to put you out. No! Never! I'm going never! 
you put a lock on the cellar entrance? But what's the use if you don't? He's in the crawl space. I don't want him to come upstairs. It isn't just the crawl space. He wants us. He'll never let us go. He wants us to love him. Don't you understand that? To love him. Again, damn Birch. Why didn't he come out? You didn't tell him about Richard. That's not the point. He's got to protect us against these hoodlums out there. We've got to have protection, don't we? Albert, tell him. Call him. Tell him whatever he wants to know. No, it's his responsibility. I mean, if those kids came in here... Albert, it's not them. They're just honking the horn. It's Richard. Please, call him. Tell him whatever he wants. They wouldn't understand. They'd hurt him. Hurt him? God, I wish they'd kill him. You'd come out when I called. Yeah, yeah. And maybe if you'd have told me the truth about that boy. Well, 
I gotta tell Lottie Freeman about her son. Richard was defending us. They had guns. They were shooting at the house. Those were firecrackers. That's all they were. Where is he? Look, it's too late now, Mr. Graves. We've got to get him. I know. You head for the woods? To some place you'd hide? There's a cave over about a mile on top of some rocks. He stayed there before he came to us. Mm -hmm. It's Paul's cave. Where is it, 3A? Uh, at Fox Street. Paul's cave, about a mile over the Wardsboro Road. Where is he? He's in the crawl space. <laughs> Why didn't you just tell Birch? They'd have killed him. Richard, they're looking for you out of the cave. They'll come back here when they don't find you. You can't stay. Richard, you've got to come out. No. 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 I ain't going away. Never. Richard, try to think, please. We can't protect you here. No, I ain't going away. Never. I'm all right here. It's safe. It isn't safe, Richard. For God's sake, there's no safe place anywhere. You've got to go. We don't want you here anymore, Richard. We want you to go. Don't you understand that? We want you to go. <laughs> Downstairs. You tired, dear? No, no. Charlie Danzig could have raked the leaves. All you have to do is ask him. I don't need Charlie Danzig to rake the leaves. They said I should exercise every day. Just 
Can't do too much at one time. All finished down there? Yeah, it's all right. I put in a new coil. I'm sure you did a fine job. Yeah. It's awfully late, isn't it? I hope we haven't made you late for your supper. Would you like to? Yeah, right Something's rattling. Strangest noise, I... Ducks expand and contract. Oh, no, that's not it. Listen. There. Heat. I'll just push the reset button. We'll call the company for service. It's only three weeks to go. There's a 60-day warranty. Thank you. 
There she goes. That's put a new tension spring in the relay reset button. I was wondering what happened to the regular man. Huh? The other man, Atley, Richard, Atley. Oh, him, yeah. He quit. Just took off. Didn't even pick up his money. Did you know him? I mean, anything about him? Nah. Boss just put him on as a vacation replacement. You know how they are. There's not a damn one of them stick to anything. You know, you ought to make sure that uh, crawl space is closed up, you know. You get cats in there, it sure stinks. Nothing worse than cats. Have dinner with us? Sure. Why not? from the city. Yeah. Bad heart or something? Why do you assume that? I can tell. You read all these? Most of them. What's this one? That's a book of poems by a man by the name of Blake. What's it about? Love, fear, death, God. Would you lend it to me? Well. Please. Would you promise to bring it back? Yeah. Sure. You know, I don't believe you've told us your name. Richard. Richard? Richard. Atley. All right, Richard Atley. Now you take good care of that book. I know. Why did you give it to him? Why did you ask him to dinner? It's all right. Albert, what is it? Nothing, nothing. Why didn't you tell me? I just didn't want to worry you. Are you sure? Yes. There's a razor and some other things in the crawl space, including my Blake edition. There's no lock on the outside cellar door, so he must have gotten in that way. He must have been starving. It's right under here. <laughs> from the refrigerator to just this side of that wall. Mm -hmm. How long do you think he's been there? I don't know. <laughs> That's funny. I guess he doesn't like mints. Look, he, he just poked his finger in the mints and then went for the apple. Alice. I don't know why I make mints. You don't like them, he doesn't like them. We've got to decide what we're going to do. Well, he's all alone, out of work. He needs a place. Alice. Oh, just till he gets another job. Do you want prunes? You're not serious. You can't take in a total stranger like that. He seems a nice enough boy. I think you better have prunes. You just don't do something like that. All right, what do you do? Well, obviously he can't stay. Tell him to go. Well, suppose he refused. Got nasty. Oh, for goodness sakes. Well, what do we know about him? Who knows what his motives are? I don't know. 
Then call the police. Oh, I don't want to call the police. I don't want to get involved with the police. Why not? So suppose he's vengeful or paranoid or something. I, I don't want to provoke him. I mean, he could come back the very next night. And I, I don't want to provoke him. Then let him stay. No, no. The best thing would be to put a lock on the cellar door. Then he can't get back in. He's not there now? No, I looked. I can go to Damson's Hardware and get a padlock. Furnace going on. Thank you. 